Welcome, welcome, welcome to another video. So today we're going to talk a little bit about screeners. And I want to make sure that you all understand the difference in your process when you're getting ready to trade, knowing when to use your screeners versus scanners. So I do want to welcome to the show today. So I want to make sure you are first knowing about this tool. So the first tool that I like to use whenever it comes down to organizing my watch list and seeing what the next uh, stock that I'm going to look at, or even if it's uh, futures or even Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, um, I am looking at a tool called Finviz. So I want to take a look at this real quick. So this is Finviz. By default, you will notice that you see a lot of ads on here. And I know that's the first thing that you kind of get um concern about when you first use this tool but um i think overall for any other site i used to use like yahoo and i still use those uh stock tweets um to see the stats of a certain stock but when you want to just find like a google um type of search or like a google front page for looking up stocks i like to use finviz and finviz this is a good place that I can look up the, the stock ticker, the company information, news, as well as the chart. So by default, again, you do see the ads. And just by going on here for free, the only thing I don't like about it is that you will see ads pop up periodically. And you'll see, you know, their video ads. And sometimes it makes the page a little clunky, especially when I'm trying to hurry up. But you do see a high level overview of the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, S&P 500. You can see how well they're doing. Uh, you can see the top winners or the top gainers, uh, the uh, stocks that have high uh, and unusual volume overbought. You do kind of see the other side too of the coin, which is the top losers. Um, let me move this out of the way here. Uh, let me go to my other camera here, but um, you do see, um, uh, some of the other items that are at the bottom, some things that are based on uh, signals and uh, different type of um, analytics that you want to kind of set your trade by. What I like about this, again, is that it gives you all this information in one dashboard, the news section that is here, the insider trade. You can see the futures, you know, basically everything. And if, if you've been looking at certain stocks, it even keeps up with some of your history. It gives you a nice little map of how well the stock market is doing. When I first start using this, I kind of quickly can see a map of, you know, whether the market is kind of moving toward, uh, is it a mixed market? Is it a bullish or is it a bearish market? You can see that quickly. So I like using the news. And again, when you do click, um, this does get a little irritating. You do see a lot of pop-ups. So just close the pop-ups and I accidentally click that there. But um you can see your news and then blogs and a bunch of links. It's just really good when you want to just quickly see an overview of how what's happening now in the market. Uh, you have screeners, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, what is screeners? Uh, what are screeners and how do you use them? You have your map. You can look at the, the financial market by uh, different sectors and how well they're performing got these nice little drop downs you can look at by industry a specific industry um, a country I think that's really cool um, you do have this portfolio and I'll you know show uh, my login in a second and basically you got some other features uh, that uh, you can use like looking at insider trading seeing what uh, major people are doing that have to report to the SEC whenever they're making a certain uh, uh, trade or uh, move in the market. Uh, then you have your indices where you can see all of your futures on one. Um, I do look at this chart here and again you do have the pop-ups and it can get a little bit annoying but um, you can see basically at a high level how well they're performing on this nice little bar chart. Um, you can click uh, or hover over some of these if uh, you want to look at the Russell you can see a chart real quick. Uh, and then there's Forex, then there's cryptocurrency, same thing, really just kind of giving you a high level of what's going on. And then there's back testing, but that's um, only if you are a higher level member. And then there's Elite. Now, I do 
um, basically um, have an account and it's not that much. But the reason why I use it mostly is for the screener. Now you can use the screener for free. And, um, but once you want to start keeping, um, uh, saving certain screeners, uh, then you uh, basically will need to start or even saving some of the charts you can get in a lead account and it'll keep up with this for you. So if you're in your trading process, so for anyone that's working on a trade, you have a process and you know, you're first, first trying to find that perfect stock that you want to track and watch. But, um, then there's like where you're getting ready down to the setup or your, your trade entry, your max loss, you know, anything that's done with risk management all the way down to executing and exiting the trade at the beginning though, you want to just be able to quickly in an organized way, really search and query the market and see how well, uh, you know, certain stocks are doing. That's where the screener comes in. Now a scanner, normally you use that for like day trading and a, scan, a scanner like trade ideas, you can kind of look up the same information, um, but it's more like real time and you're seeing it pop up as it's happening. Um, that's something that you use if you need to really just see the market data. But if you like swing trading or you're just creating a watch list, a perfect screener will do just fine. So uh, in the screener, you have descriptor, uh, more of like the, um, descriptive type uh, search queries that you can do it. You can do it based on fundamentals and you can do it on technical or you can do all. Now, when you first get used to this, depending on what you are, some people are more fundamental, uh, some people are more technical. Uh, I'll end up, um, you know, kind of leaning toward technical at the beginning. Like I want to see all the stocks with, you know, uh, 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 overbought OSR. Uh, I mean, RSI, um, so relative strength index, you can quickly hit on that, that drop down, and it's basically running that search or that query on the market for you. So uh, let me pull this up on my screen, but you have it right here where you can see it. Sorry, um, you can, this is what I meant earlier. You have the descriptive, fundamental, technical, and you see as I'm clicking through that, it kind of saved my last one. Uh, the drop down and it's basically searching all of the um, securities that are in here and it's searching it in a split second and that's what I really really like about it is you want to be able to have something where you can quickly search and uh, again look for opportunities now when you get advanced in this you will create your own preset screeners and that's why it's good of course to have an account and um, you can do this even on the free account. But once you get to the point where you want to like really get into some detailed stuff, it's better just to have the elite. Uh, but the main thing I want to point out is um, I do have screeners for different type um, of plays. So basic swing trades. This one is based on, uh, I like to trade small cap stocks. So you have your market cap and you can filter by that. And again, if you have an elite, you can do more of a custom. Uh, then you can do price. Like, um, let's say I want to trade anything under $5. You can, again, change that. You can say, okay, I want to do anything under $7. And it went from 92 stocks to 137. Volume is a very important item. And we'll go into other videos on certain type of screeners that could be used, but uh, these are really good tools if you want to quickly uh, filter out the market. Of course, it was over 7,000 securities here, but once I put this uh, filter on, it, it quickly went to 137, and I filtered it based on volume, and if you hover over them, it'll let you know uh, the definition of these items, and you'll get familiar with it as you keep doing it. Relative volume, which is looking at it, the volume over the last three months, and that's the average and I wanted to have it over one because when stocks are getting ready to make a move, you'll notice that uh, as the sentiment increase, you'll see the amount of volume will increase and you'll begin to notice that. Uh, and then of course, if you're very particular about uh, trading uh, stocks within a certain country, you can filter it. Of course I do trade all over, but this one is specific to the US now. It, it applies for the different styles of trades you want to do. So if you're doing, 
again, whether you're doing swing trading, uh, you can see that some of them could be just, you know, customized lists. If whether you're looking for oversold, breakout, um, continuation, uh, for example, during a, a down market, I like looking for uh, oversold stocks, especially uh, when everyone is hurting and the market is selling off. I want to know what stocks there are that I can get in. And of course, this is looking for stocks, again, between $1 to $7.00. And if you have an elite account, you can customize it and, you know, uh, do a little bit more here. But for me, I'm able to do from one to seven. I think when you don't have it, you can do it like, um, you know, under $7 or whatever. But it's good because I can filter. I don't want anything. Let's say I don't want anything um, under $2. I can easily hit that and then um, I can update that. And of course, it went from like 70 to 49 uh, and that's a standard. I noticed that when I trade something that's under $2, I have a problem. So uh, you can customize that and you can save these uh, um, screeners. And what's great about it is because no matter how the market is doing, I have a screener for that. Again, the market is selling off. I can um, quickly do that, uh, apply this um, this filter and I'm able to see everything. Now, one thing that is good too is uh, you can you can determine how you want to see it. So um, you can see things in an overview where you can see a list and you can see nothing but the chart. Uh, you can see if, if you're very technical and you don't want to see anything about news and you just want to get into that, you can then apply how you want to read um, the information. And that's what these tabs are. So these tabs are just basically how you want to filter it. And this is how you want to consume the data. So um, I like news because news give you both technical information, the chart, as well as the news. And I like to see the chart. I like to see the technical, like especially if I'm looking for oversold. I want to see something that also has a high short float. Uh, and then that way, when I'm scrolling down, I'm looking at, is there any news? Like this one has some news and the short float is at 8%. And I see that it's starting to uh, do a little fish hook here. What I do is quickly do your screener so that you can add maybe some good trade ideas for that um, that week. So that's the main purpose of it. And of course, you can update your actual uh, watch list uh, by pulling some of these stocks. And you can you know use some of this to uh, even look at it during the daytime. It's not going to be real time. But when you um, have an elite account, it is a little bit quicker. I noticed that. Um, and you may see something. I've seen people, they'll try to uh, day trade using this, which I wouldn't recommend. I recommend you use a scanner for that. But you can look up something that's happening if you're doing the swing trade or if you want to see something enter day, you can um, you know come here real quick and find a good trade idea and you can see what's moving. So I think that that's pretty cool. Another thing that is great about this is uh, whenever you want to go and look at the details of a stock, you can uh, simply click on it. And of course, if you have the elite, you can um, even add drawings to it and keep up with uh, certain uh, support and resistance levels and all of that. I don't use it for that as much because I'm just, you know, again, I use it more for uh, updating my watch list and finding a trade idea. Uh, for swing trading. And of course, I just use it in general to keep up with what's going on in the market. Mm -hmm. But um, again, this is where you can actually go and look at some of the details. Once you click into it, uh, you can again see the, the news on it. And then of course, they have a little stock tweet integration where you can see some of the social mentions about that stock. So I hope this was really helpful. I'm not going to go into any uh, deeper details on it, but I did want to at least leave you with this is a tool that I would recommend that you add, but remember that you have a process. And if you have that process, you want to make sure that you're incorporating it within your process, especially within your trading process to gather any type of trade ideas. So I want to make sure that you all are uh, definitely coming here to see some of the tools that we do have and make sure that you hit the like and subscribe and we will 
go into some more trade ideas in the future. So I definitely want to welcome you all to this channel. We'll be updating it some more. So if you like this, um, definitely hit that subscribe and I will see you later.